Yeah, I'd love for you to expand on what you touched on there, which is just kind of sharing some of your thoughts on what I think you described pretty well, the plague of police shootings that we're seeing and witnessing and I think all trying to understand. So I was called by a man about, I think, a year and a half ago who had read Deep Survival, and he said, I run an outfit that trains police, and we have a problem, and I want to know if you have any thoughts on it. Can we meet? Can we talk? And I said, sure. And he told me that they have a new kind of police training, and it's called force on force. And in this kind of training, the police are given guns that are exactly like their real guns, except they don't shoot real bullets. They shoot a thing like a paintball. And the police get geared up so that the paintball doesn't hurt them. And they actually have confrontations in which they shoot each other. And when they're taught to shoot, they're also taught to take people down physically. They're taught all this force, forceful stuff, and they do it with each other, with real policemen. Some of the policemen pretend to be bad guys. Some pretend to be good guys. And so it's very, very different from traditional police training. You know, in the old days, if you were a cop, and my uncle was a cop, so I knew about their training, you go down in the basement to the firing range and you shoot a a circular target. And that's, you're done. That's your training. And then they started making a silhouette of a person. And then they started making more active targets that popped out at you. And it got more and more and more sophisticated until today when we have these actual running gun battles where police empty their guns at each other in training. And so the guy said they had been experiencing this accident in which – and, you know, when during this training they pop out from doorways and weird things happen to surprise you and you're supposed to shoot the other guy. And so the the accident goes like this. They finish training. They put their real guns back on. Somebody pops out of a doorway, and the cop shoots him. And it's another cop who just happened to be coming back into the building. And so these terrible accidents were happening, horrible, you know, sad, sad accidents. And the guy said, can you help us understand what's going on? And I said, yeah, I can stop this tomorrow for you if you want me to. And he said, how? I said, don't point guns at each other. I mean, it's kind of a fundamental rule of handling firearms that we all learn very early on. And he said, well, we can't mm-hmm. do that because this training is now very popular and it's the norm. And so we had a long discussion about other things they might do. But going back to the FBI agent, when these guys train in this way, if they have to fire on a bad guy, they empty their gun. So it's not like, bang, I'm going to shoot you in the toe so that you stop walking. It's like you aim for the center of the body and you aim and shoot all your bullets and you do it really fast. And it becomes that reflex, like the FBI agent handing back the gun. You're not thinking in that high stress environment. And these training exercises, although they aren't meant to be lethal, are very high stress. You just go bang, 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 and it's over. It's over in seconds. So on the street, when these cops who are all trained up to that adrenaline rush feeling, get in a situation like that, they do what they trained and they pull the gun and they fire all the bullets. And so that's exactly what's happening. And I think this force on force training is a big mistake. It's causing a lot of fatalities in civilian life and among the police themselves. So bad idea. Subscribe to Outliers with Daniel Scrivener now in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts be the first to hear about new episodes and receive exclusive content by joining our newsletter at outliers.fm. I can't wait to help you level up and live your best life.